verses, I just, I wanted to read a couple of those lyrics that just really stood out to me when I was reading. I looked them up and it says, you bring freedom to the captives and good news to the poor, healing to the broken and joy to those who mourn. You turn ashes into beauty, the ruins you restore. I am a testimony of the goodness of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that he turned these ashes into beauty. I was ruined at one time, but I'm thankful that I've been restored. I'm thankful that I have a testimony to show to others that God is good no matter what. No matter what's going on. All right, that's just a little appetizer. We're going to get right into the Word of God. Let's turn to the book of Exodus. Read at the beginning. So if you should be able to turn with you. Exodus chapter 33. We're going to read two verses in your hearing tonight. It'll be verses 21 and 22. Once again, that's Exodus 21 and 22. When you have that, you can say amen. I think they have it ready for up on the screen. Nope. Maybe not. Nope. Oh, well, we'll give them a little bit of time. Amen. <laughs> Once again, that's Exodus 21 and 22. And I'll begin, begin reading. Um, it says, And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. My title for tonight's message is A Hiding Place. A Hiding Place. I ask Pastor for his blessing on tonight's message. He further 
states that he will not go with them. Uh, I read verses 21 and 22 in your hearing, but verse number 3 is where it states that. I'm not going to go back to it. You can read that in your own hearing, but I thought about that. What a scary thought. It says, I will not go up in the midst of thee, because he was mad. Now, I don't want God to ever be mad at me. But sometimes I make mistakes. Sometimes I fail. Sometimes I make the wrong choice. But you know what? I'm thankful for a merciful and a graceful God that still loves me in the midst of those problems. Yeah. In the midst of the mistakes. In the midst of the failures. God's still there. Yeah, amen. Even in the hiding places, God's still there. And it's going to make sense as we go. Just walk with me. It says, for those that are stiff-necked, it says in the Bible. Actually, verse, it says it twice at the beginning. It says in verses, I believe it's 3 and 5, that they're a stiff-necked people. The Israelites were stiff-necked, hard-headed, didn't want to listen. Anybody? Sometimes, I know a lot of times the clients, hard-heads. The dean, he said in his message the other day, hard-headed deans. Oh, boy. You know, once again, we're hard-headed sometimes. We don't want to listen. But we need to be careful that we listen to God all the time. Yes, sir. Don't ever not listen to God. Because you can get it, be in a scary situation. Like I said, in verse number 3, he says, you're my people. But I'm not going up with you. Moses is going to lead you. I'm not going up with you. I should kill you. I should destroy you. But Moses stepped in. Go ahead and step up. Stand up for me. I know I do this sometimes. Be thankful for Moses. Be thankful that he steps in when we mess up. I said we. Be thankful that we have him to stand in the gap. And, and to be there for us. We have the best pastor we can ask for. And I believe that. I don't know if you do, but we need to give him a hand praise. Because we have the best pastor that you can go for. I'm thankful for Moses to step in when I mess up. That's good. That was actually a lesson later on in my notes. But maybe I'll make to stand up again later. It says, the, Is the Israelites mourned in verse number 4. It says they mourned after they called him a stiff-necked people. You want to be hard-headed? No. They mourned. And that means... They wanted to repent of what they did. They repented them and warned you. I'm sorry. Repentance still means something. And it always will. We still need to repent. I still need to repent. Sometimes I mess up and I still need to ask God for His forgiveness. And I need to, you know what? Turn away from it. Turn away from it. It doesn't mean 360 and walk right back towards it. It means 180 and walk away from it. God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And he's ready to forgive. But you know what? You need to turn away from it and get as far away from it as you can. I don't want to be called stiff-necked by God. I don't want to be called a hard head by God. I don't want God to leave the midst of me. And I need to make sure I'm in the right place. The right place with God. So once again, he calls them stiff-necked. They need to repentance. Repentance is key. God calls them stiff-necked again. He reinforces what he is saying. It's a warning. Thankful for the warning. I'm thankful for the warning sometimes. I'm thankful for the warning sometimes up here. We get a message, we don't like it sometimes. Sometimes that's the warning from God that I need. I'll take it off of you. God, let me hear. If I mess up, let me hear. God, if I did something wrong, let me know. And I'll come up and repent for it. Open it up to me. You know what, Pastor? If I get up here and say how God gives it to you. I don't care what anybody else says. It's what God says. We get up here and we say, what well, thus saith the word of God, not what says I. Amen. It's what God wants us to say. We need to get out of the way sometimes. So it's stiff-necked. Once again, the mercy of God. He says, don't put your ornaments on. And we're not going to talk about that, but they had the apparel that they put on. He said, don't even put that on. And the first thing I thought of, we need to worry about the inside more than the outside. Yeah, Right? Yes. Get the inside taken care of, and God will work on the outside. That's right. We need to take care of the inside of it. You know what? Because some of the bad stuff comes out of us. That's right. I was talking to the class this morning. You know, you need to watch what you say sometimes. I said, we have choices. I said, you have choices of what you listen to, what you watch, and how you talk. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those three things you're all in control of. I know our, I was telling them, I know your parents take you places, and you're young, but you know what? You have choices as you get older. You have a choice to what you listen to, who you listen to, what you watch, 
and how you talk. That's right. That's right. Watch how you talk to people. If you want people to talk to you good, you better talk to people good. If you want to be treated with love, you better show some love. If you want them to love you back and be friend friendly to you, you better, you better show that to other people. Once again, don't be stiff-necked. Just because we're children of God, he'll turn on us. You don't want that. He'll turn on you. Like I said, in the beginning of this, of this chapter, he didn't want to be in the midst of them. He wanted out of there. He said, Moses, you take control. You lead, which he was supposed to lead anyways, but God didn't even want He wanted to kill them. I want to kill them all. Moses steps in. God, please don't do that. It's your people. And I know I'm paraphrasing, but we'll get through it. It says, Moses takes the tabernacle out of the midst. This is in verses 7 and 8 of chapter 33. He takes the tabernacle, the dwelling place of God, his house. Is this God's house or our house? God's, God's house. And we all know that. We need to respect it as so. God's always here. We should come in here expecting things to change in our life. Yes, Maybe amen. Not. We should come in here with an expectation. If you're all good, if you come in here and you're good, great. I'm thankful that you're on top of the mountain. But there's some people that come in here and they're in the valley. And you know what? And we need to get behind them. We need to get beside them. We need to pick them up. We need to lift them up. That's what we're supposed to do. It's unity. And once again, take care of those who we have. And God will add. I believe that. Once again, Moses took the tabernacle, the dwelling place, and removed it from the camp. Removed it from the wickedness. Removed it from the mist of the camp. But it didn't take it completely away. Just believe me. Walk with me. I read down through 33. I studied it. Just believe me. If you don't, you can go second and check me after. Once again, verses 7 and 8. They take it out. He doesn't remove it. He puts it on the outside of the camp. The Israelites can still see it. It's still there. They have a choice where they can go and be at the tabernacle or they can choose to stay in their tents. Right? A choice, once again. It will make sense because he removes it from the mist of it. Once again, the mercy of God. He sets it at a distance so they can still see it, but then they also know what they forfeited, what they gave up. Moses enters the tabernacle. The people are watching, and he begins to pray on behalf of the people, and the cloud comes down. And they see it. It descends on the tabernacle. Verses 9 through 10. God's presence comes back down. Even in the midst of their mistakes. Even in the midst of their mess ups. Even in the midst of them being called stiff necked. And hard headed. And all those things that I use. My words. God was still there. I'm thankful. That when I mess up. God's still there. It might not feel it, but I can still see them in the distance. Just like that, that tabernacle was on the outside of the camp. It should have been on the inside. It should have been in the middle. It should have been right there. But you know what? God was still in their presence. And I'm thankful that even when I mess up, I can run to Him and hide in that place. When I mess up, when I'm in ruins, when I'm in ashes, when I'm failing, when I'm in the valley, God, I'm thankful that I can still hide in You. Once again, that pillar descends on the tabernacle. Once again, I, I put right here. See, I told you I was going to keep using you. Moses entered the tabernacle and prayed for the people, and the presence of God came back down into the tabernacle. Be thankful for the man of God. That's right. Yes, sir. The man of God could have just walked away. God was ready to walk away. He was ready to kill him. Ready to end it. I want to end it. But you know what? Moses stepped in and the presence came back down. Be thankful for your man of God. He stands in that gap when we all mess up. Sin or just circumstances. I put that. Sometimes it's our choice to sin. But sometimes life happens and we get messed up. Where are you, God? Where are you, God? Been there. But ben, is this better? They yelled at me the other night. They yelled at me, but I'm, I, I tend to do this with the microphone. So I'm like, you know, using it up here. I almost told them I'd use the lapel. But, you know, I'm like, I, 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 I gotta use it up here so people can hear me. They don't have to turn it up so loud. And once again, I'm thankful for the person that stands in the gap. You know, sometimes I mess up. Sometimes I make mistakes. And I know. 
My name leaves his mouth. I know it does. There's many a times where I called him in the middle of the night. He answers the call. There's many a times where I asked him to meet me over at the church, and he meets me over at the church. I'm thankful for all the blood, sweat, and tears that he puts into this because it gives me an example of what I should do. What I should do as a man of God, and I'm thankful for that. I don't tell you enough. I'm thankful for you, Pastor. And I'm thankful for him. We should be too. That's right. Amen. Thankful for the gap man. As the Israelites see that that cloud has descended because of what Moses did, his presence is back. And they begin to worship. This stiff-necked people, this hard-headed people. It says Moses prayed, the presence came down, but they had to worship. I'll say that again. Moses prayed, God come back, don't leave your people. God's presence came back down into the tabernacle. The cloud filled it. His presence filled the place. But then the Israelites had to worship. We need to worship. Yeah, we know that, but we all need to. I'm going to keep saying we because sometimes, a lot of times, my shoes are dirty before I even come out here because I stepped on my toes a bunch of times going over these notes before I even give it to you. You know what? We need to worship no matter what. Give them praise no matter what. I know you hurt. We all have different problems. We all have different circumstances. If you're hurting, you can praise him from the pew. You don't have to walk up here. It's good to walk up here. He'll meet you. He'll carry you. He'll walk with you up here. But you know what? Raise your hands. Clap your hands. You don't have to worry, Jeff. But do it your way. Give it to God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. I know it's always there and I can see it. In his courts with praise. God, I thank you for everything you've done for me. No matter what, you've already brought me through some things. Anybody been brought through some things? I know you might be going through some things right now, but you know what? There's a hiding place in God, and He can be there tonight. Once again, that cloud descended, but they had to worship. Because even though the tabernacle was removed, there was still welcome to follow it and to worship. It's a choice. If our heart goes towards God... He will graciously meet us there. If our hearts go, and I even put, I'm going to read that again because I put in parentheses 100%. If our hearts go towards God 100%, He will graciously meet us in the middle of our problem. Graciously. 100%. You know, sometimes I, that's, I'll, I'll take it off of you and I'll put it on me. Sometimes I come in here and God thank you for your grace and mercy. Sometimes I come in here 75%. I give it to him. 75%. Where's that other 25%? He gave 100% up on the cross for all of us. I need to give him 100% all the time. Now our 100% might be a little bit different. Some of us come in here with a little bit worse circumstances. But the 100% that you have, give it to him. And see what he does. See if he picks you up. When I need him on Monday, I'm going to praise him on Sunday because I know I'll need him on Monday. 100%. We're getting there. We're about halfway through. Halfway through the verses. Verses 12 and 14 of chapter 33. Moses prays again. Prays again for him. Thank you, Pastor. He prays again, it says. The importance and the power of prayer. I put that in, in parentheses and I put prayer in all capital letters. I know. I know we all know that. I know we all know that here, but the importance and power of prayer. You know what? He brought it out in his last message. He always brings it out. And my grandfather always brought it out too. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth little? No, availeth much. Effectual and fervent. Do it and mean it. Amen. Amen. That's what I get out of that. Well, I pray and I pray. Well, continue to pray and continue to pray and do it and mean it and see where God meets you. I know we need to hide in them sometimes, but sometimes, God, I need you right now. Amen. He knows we need him. He knows our circumstances, but you know what? He still wants to hear it. God, meet me. 
Christ kind of stepped out there. He says, if you know me, and he does know me, he knows us all by name. He sang that this morning. I think it was this morning, but I'm glad that God knows my name. I'm glad that he knows my name. He says, I find, I find grace in your sight. Come back to your people. Once again, the mediator, Moses, was saying this. If I have found, if you know me, and if I have found grace in your sight, come back to your people. Once again, be thankful for your man of God. Yeah. My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. It says, Moses says, if we don't have pres the presence of God, I can't move forward. Right. All right? So now I'm, gonna, I'm paraphrasing this. I'm going down through chapter 33. So I'm in verse number 15 now. And it says, you know what, I'll just read that real quick. So it says in verse number 15, And he said unto him, If thy presence... Presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. In other words, God, if you're not going with us, we might as well not go. God, I need you with me. I need you with us. God, we need you. Right? I need you with me. Every day. If I if you're not with me, I, I should I'm not even going forward. I'm not moving until you're with me. I'm not going forward until you're with us again. And that's what Moses was saying. God, you need to go with us or I'm not even moving forward. The significance of God's spirit and presence in our lives should be above anything else. I'm going to read that again. The significance of God's spirit and his presence should be more, mean more than anything in our lives. Anything. Like I said, I just left my daughter at the, at the soccer game and left to come here. You know what? I need to keep God here. Did it hurt me to leave? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I want to see my daughter playing. But you know what? God's presence in my life is more than anything. That means more than anything. I love my family. I would not have my family if it wasn't for God anyways. I wouldn't have anything that I have if it wasn't for God. And I'm thankful for that. Yes, it hurt to leave. But you know what? God's presence should mean more than anything else. And when it does, He'll take care of the rest. Keep him first. One of my first few messages when I first preaches, when I first preaches, God first, everything else last. If you're not first, you're last. Funny movie, but it kind of makes sense when it comes to God. If he's not first, he's not going to be there. Well, that's me. Remember when we used to have the, the message board out here that used to put the little, you know, signs up, you know, they go and change them every week and you know, things that if God's not going to be part time. Full time. And sometimes, uh, once again, thankful for the mercy and grace of God, you know, that we want them on Sunday, and we want them on Wednesday, and then what about Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? It's easy to come in here and praise God on Sundays because that's what we come here to do. But I need them more on Monday. And then I need them even more on Tuesday. And then I need them even more on Wednesday. And then I need them even more on Thursday. And then I need them more on Friday and Saturday. And I know you get it, but you know what? I need them more today than I needed them yesterday. You know why? Because the devil keeps coming. I wake up, the devil's there. I wake up, the devil's there. I'm out at Austin Town Soccer Fields. The devil's there. Why are you leaving? Because of God. Why are you leaving? God gave you this family. He gave you your wife. He gave you your kids. You should be here watching them. No, I want to go and serve God and he'll take care of us. That's right. Like I said, yes, I'm human. It did hurt. It does stink. But you know what? God is better than all. I wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for God. And I'm thankful for Him. Those who know how to value God's favor in their lives are best prepared to receive it. I want to read that again. I know it's not Bible, but I wrote that down. It says, those who know how to value God's favor in your life are best prepared to receive it. So if you know where to put God, you'll be able to receive things a little bit easier. It's hard sometimes. 
Life stinks. Circumstances happen. Bad things happen. But you know what? God is still good. No matter what. No matter the circumstances, God is still good. And I know, so every, there's people that always have it worse than me, and I know that. But you know what? There's things that I go through, you know what? God is still good. There's things that I go through that sometimes it's tough, but you know what? i got to stand up and put one foot in front of the other, and I need to turn it over to God every day. Every day. Get up, God. I know it might be tough today, but you go ahead and take the wheel. You go ahead and take it. I know it hurts. I know my body hurts, but you know what, God? You're still good. I need to hide sometimes. I need to hide in your comfort. I need to hide in your pavilion. I need to hide in your shelter. God, please take the wheel today. We might not make it to Wednesday. We might not make it to Sunday. God, take the wheel on Monday. And take it on Tuesday and every single day. God, take it. And he'll hide you there. God, shows me, God, show me thy way that I may find grace in thy sight. So as Moses continues to pray and seek God, 16 through 20, we're almost to 21. You guys should clap for that like these So verses 16 through 20, God continues to pray. I mean, Moses continues to pray and to seek God. Once again, the importance and the power of prayer in our lives. You know, I put this in here and I kind of jumped ahead of my notes because I stated it already earlier. But the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know, we need to continue to pray. And then we need to continue to pray some more. And then when that prayer gets answered, continue to pray some more for something else or for somebody else. The effectual, fervent, how much does it mean to you? Well, I keep praying. How much does it mean to you? How much do they mean to you? I know it's, it comes with me. And it might be silly to some. But that means something to me. Yes, Lord. God means everything to me. They're right there behind them. The effectual, fervent prayer. I'm going to continue to pray. And I'm going to continue to mean it. And it says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Sometimes I mess up. But you know what? I, I think I'm righteous because I, I keep trying to do the things that I'm supposed to do with God. And I keep trying to listen to the Bible. And I keep trying to listen to the pastor. And I keep praying. And I keep tithing. And I keep fasting. And you know what? It's going to avail much one day. I know it's not my time and I haven't seen it yet. But I'm going to continue to believe that it's going to happen one day. In those times though, I'm going to hide in God. Because the devil's just lurking. And he's waiting for you to give up. No, sir. No, ma'am. I'm not giving up. And you need to say that too. I said that to them this morning too. I can't do it for you. Your parents can't do it for you. Mama and Papa and Grandma and Grandpa can't do it for you. They can pray because the effectual prayer of prayer to righteous men avail much. I'm thankful for the prayers that I have before me because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. But once again, you need to believe it. That's it. That's it. It's going to change. Maybe not. I need you to believe that tonight. You might be hiding tonight. You might be in a hiding place. And that's okay. But you need to believe that it's going to change. David, get out of the cave. Get out of it. You're not supposed to be there. And sometimes I was David. I know this is a different story, but David was hiding in the cave. And the man, get out of there, David. You don't believe in there. You're the man after God's own heart. What are you doing hiding? Get out of there. God is behind you. Sometimes I know it doesn't feel like it. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it. God, where are you? God, where are you in this situation? Your will be done always. Not mine. But God, where are you? Why 
still can. You still will. Things are going to change, but you just got to keep coming, keep pushing, keep moving forward. And I'll be there. Moses kept praying, and we need to keep praying too. Praying continuously and meaning it. In the book of Matthew, it tells us, and I actually gave this to Brother Ben, Matthew 7 and 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Words and read, God's word, directly to the people. Ask, you need to ask. Once again, prayer. Seeking and knocking, those are action things. It takes some actions. I'm going to seek with everything that I got. I'm going to ask God, and I'm going to continue to seek, and then I'm going to knock. That's a physical thing. I'm going to knock. And you know what it says? It shall be opened unto you. Anybody have problems? Anybody? Anybody have problems tonight? Do we know the problem solver? We need to start knocking. I always think about that, that painting. I think you brought it out before. About that painting where God's on the other side of the door. There's no doorknob over there. There's no doorknob on that side. Now he's knocking. He's not going to open it. He's waiting for you to open it. Let him walk into your situation. God's a perfect gentleman. He's not going to force us to do anything. But you know what? He's always up here. He's always waiting. He just wants us to come up and knock. Or answer his knock even. You want your situation taken care of? I'm here tonight. You want your situation taken care of tonight? I'm here tonight. Are you going to answer it? I know there's not very many of us here tonight, but I always say, and I know I came to a little bit late, but I still went into my room, and I pray, God, your will be done, not mine. If I have to reach one person, God, let me reach that one person. And there's more than two or three of us here, so where there are two or three of us gathered together in Jesus' name, there I'll be in the midst of them. So there's more than two or three of us here, so if there's problems here tonight, God can answer That's right. Amen. We might be in a hiding place, but we need to come out. That's right. Come out and meet God. Ask, seek, and knock. The first step is to ask. The next two steps, seek and knock. This leads us to our opening scriptures. We're finally there. So verses 21 and 22. And it says, And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. It says, Behold, there is a place by me. I thought about another scripture in the book of Psalms 27 and 5, and I gave this to Brother Ben, if you want to put that up there now. It says, There is a place, Psalms 27 and 5, for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And I'm thankful for the times when things are kind of shaky in my life. That I know the rock to run to. And I know that I'm built on a foundation that's Jesus Christ. And no matter the situations, and no matter the trouble, and no matter the times I'm hiding sometimes, I'm thankful that God is there. And He's there all the time. Even when He doesn't, he doesn't feel like it, He's there, right? Sometimes we, we need to run to Him. Well, I can't run. Well, you need to walk to Him. Well, I can't walk. My feet hurt. Well, you need to raise your hands to Him. You need to open up your voice to Him. All of us can do that. I know you might be hurt, but God, I need you. Tonight. Not next Wednesday, not next Sunday. God, I need you tonight. And he'll help you. He will reach you. He will hide you in that pavilion. He will hide you when that time is in need. Thou shalt stand upon a rock, it said at the, at the end of verse 21. 
another scripture, Psalms 18 and 2. Go ahead, Brother Ben, you can put that up there. It says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Once again, my fortress and my deliverer and my strength. That's the part of that that stuck out to me when I was reading that verse. My strength. Sometimes I feel weak. Sometimes I know I'm weak. Well, you can't admit that. You're a, you're a man. You got to be strong and mighty. You got to hold the family. You got to uplift. You got to strengthen. You're a man of God. You know what? I'm weak. Amen. This flesh is weak. Once again, coming back to that repentance. Can't ever make this flesh spiritual. The devil's going to keep coming and keep messing up. But once again, I'm going to keep coming to God. And I'm going to keep turning it all over to Him. And I'm thankful for that. Once again, run into God. And I'm thankful that when I am weak, He's strong. Well, I know we all know that. We know those scriptures. It's mostly home folk tonight. But I'm going to say that once again. I'm thankful when I'm weak. That he's strong. Anybody weak tonight? Maybe not. Those that raised their hands. I'm thankful for the honesty. We need to run to God. In my last scripture, 22. Now the last thing that I wanted to, to look up was that word clift. Anybody ever look that up? The word clift. I know you're a definition man. But the clift of a rock. A place of safety and refuge where God hides his servants. That's a biblical definition. I've looked at some certain definitions and I looked at that cliff of the rock. It said in verse number 22, And it shall come to pass while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, a place of safety and refuge. I'm thankful for the safety and the refuge that I can run to in times of need. In times of trouble, in times of despair, in times where I don't feel like I'm good enough, once again, I'm thankful that God sees me in a different light. Yes. I'm thankful that God sees me differently than I see myself. And I'm thankful that I can hide in Him when times are in trouble. Now, I'm getting ready to close. I don't know if you guys are going to play something. I'm just going to time. But I'm thankful, once again, for the hiding place that I do have. But, once again, like I said, you have to get out of that hiding place sometimes, too. Like I said, he said, David, come out. Come out and get away from those troubles. Get away from those circumstances. And I know we come in here with troubles. I know we come in here with circumstances. But you know what? God's here always. He inhabits the praises of his people. So we need to praise him and he'll inhabit us. He'll inhabit the praises of his people. Yeah, and I already said there's two or three of us here, right? So there's more than two or three of us, and there's more than two or three problems. Now, like I said, God can reach us there. God can reach us at home. God can reach us on the workplace. But you know what? There's just something about coming up here. So once again, that's your choice. I'll never force anybody, but I don't know. These guys right here can probably vouch for me. Sometimes we stand up here, and you can see it working on people. And I want to go and pull people out of the pew sometimes. Sometimes I want to do that, but I can't do that unless God tells me to. You know what? Once again, God's up here. And the hiding place is here. You can go ahead and stand to your feet because I know sometimes we wait for that. And sometimes we wait for form and fashions in church. And I know we wait for them to sing and to string the chord, and I know that. And I've done that. I've made that mistake. But sometimes we just need to walk up here and have a little talk with Jesus. Now, you may be okay, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that you are okay. But you know what? Sometimes we need to come up here and have a little talk with Jesus. I need to go back to one thing here, because I remember I skipped over it all right here. It says, and I wanted to point this out because I loved seeing her this morning, Sister Landeman on the back of you there this morning. It says, I says, I can't go anywhere without you. That was back in verse number 15. Moses said, I can't go anywhere without you. We can't move forward, God, unless you're with us. And I thought about the song that she used to sing. She used to sing a lot. Of I can't even walk without you holding my hand. And I know there's 
there's times where it's tough. I know there's times where you're struggling. But that's when we need to run to God, that hiding place. And you know what? He'll walk with you. God, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I can't get through this. I can't get through this battle without you, God. And He'll hide you. He'll come up and rock His arms around you. He'll come and pick you up when you need picked up. And as they begin to play, this altar's open. Some have already come up and answered that. Answered that call. I pray that more come up here. There's a hiding place for you. God hears to answer your prayer tonight. And I'm thankful to God that He's here. I'm thankful that He don't leave us. He don't forsake us. And there is a hiding place in God. I 